the we are the women matters of the wisdom factory and we meet again after the summer holidays and i'm curious what we have to tell each other about it's about two months that we didn't meet is it six mm -hmm. weeks two months, something like that so okay so i can start i already told monia we still have no rain the trees are all you know suffering a lot and if it doesn't start soon then olive oil mm, 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 the olives will dry so it's really one of my wells is dry the other one still has some water so ah, it's a little bit a problem uh, i in the meantime i heard in germany it's uh, flooded so i asked every german to send me some water over <laughs> Okay, I was fine in summer, I had a lot of, of guests here and yeah, time passes very quickly and I'm not yet back in a modus of doing regular things uh, on the internet. I give over to Monia who was the first one to arrive. Yeah, I'm fine. I feel much better than I felt a week ago or two weeks ago. I had a very uh, <laughs> a summer of fullness and my stomach doesn't isn't ready for that anymore so I after one week I had to decide to reduce and reduce and now that I'm home I'm feeling much better eating less but it's very difficult for me to be in Schlaraffia and not to <laughs> um, but otherwise I'm fine and as I put into the chat this book I am very very delighted to have found it I should have found it 20 years ago but maybe I wouldn't have understood it then and I can recommend it to everybody Andrew Holacek Dreams of Light I can I guess uh, Christine is not, won't find it in the chat as well, so I'll put it in the chat. Again. <laughs> again. <laughs> um, and I heard that Christine is suffering from COVID. Is that true? Oh my goodness. Anyway, Monia, you could talk about the book uh, later. If later, don't yeah, I'll just part of, because this interests me also. Yeah, I'll okay. pass on to Christine uh, to hear the news from her. Um, and Heidi, did you get an email from Tom or something about it? Is that what? No? From, from Larry. I got an email from Larry. Okay. Yeah, we went, um, this was back in mid-July. We were on vacation and um, we went to the East Coast to visit family and friends. And um, vacation was a, a little bit of a struggle because we were at the beach and it was crank, uh, cold and rainy most days. We didn't really get any beach weather, um, but we were with our friends and family and that, that part was good. Uh, our friends, we, had, we were with two couples, they did not get sick. So we feel that um, we probably got sick on the ferry ride or Tom got sick, he gave it to me and a couple other people, but we got sick on the ferry ride from Provincetown, Massachusetts to Boston, Massachusetts. And because it was cold and rainy, like everybody was inside the ferry instead of being out on the rails. We, we wore our masks because masks were required for, for public transportation. So we did have masks on. Um, and I don't know if the news got to Europe or not about these were like the first breakthrough infections um, of the Delta variant. So it did make the news. In fact, Tom and I were in a newspaper article in the Washington Post. We were featured in a newspaper article because I happened to know somebody who was writing that up and he asked if we would participate. So um, we weren't real sick. It was kind of, I kind of describe it like um, a cold, a bad cold. You're definitely ill, but um, we had cold symptoms of congestion um, we probably wouldn't have gotten tested, except that we both lost our sense of smell. So when we realized we couldn't smell anything, we were like, this is just, this is not a cold. So we did get tested and we're positive. And um, 
I'd have to say probably the worst of it was just worrying about other people. You know, my, my sister had to get tested and my niece ended up getting it. Another person we knew got it. Um, I had a friend who has, I mean, just a whole bunch of people had to be tested. Um, unfortunately, not many had contracted it, but um, yeah, that it's really disturbing to think that other people that you spend time with uh, could have gotten sick from, from you passing it on. Um, so I don't know, the, the actual symptoms lasted about three days, and then it was just a matter of kind of, um, you know, getting over some fatigue and feeling back, just like with a cold, it takes a little bit of, a, of time to bounce back and feel fully yourself. Um, our sense of smell is, I'd say 50% back, maybe a little bit more than 50%. We definitely can smell things now, but it's not entirely like it was before. Um, so, I mean, all in all, I think we felt fortunate and, you know, we were vaccinated. So we were glad that we didn't get real sick. Uh, and yeah, that was, that was almost two months ago. So we're, we're doing good now. Yeah, thanks for asking. Wow. And I will pass it to Gertraub. Ah. <sighs> I have a new contract, uh, so I uh, acquired it uh, during the summer, and it's a biocatering, and um, yeah, it's about the future, how to how to set up the, yeah, how to keep what's good and and even add to it. It's an appreciative inquiry process. And we are having a kickoff on Wednesday with all 40, 40 staff members. So it's exciting and a lot of work <laughs> to get all the basic interviews. It's like uh, we interviewed, I don't know, 20 people or so. Um, and, and to get the juice out of it and then to, to really find out what to work on. So that's, that's interesting. <laughs> and there's another project going on, we call it uh, joy. Enjoy change, sorry, my head is not so. <laughs> I've worked seven hours today without break, so I'm, and then I got, went for a walk. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's another one. It's for single people that join in a in a group to also AI. And yesterday I was in Basel uh, to do to do my last day of uh, my healers training, and. Uh, that was amazing. And, and I think today I'm still integrating. So it's like my head is, <laughs> there's a lot going on, not, not, not um, physically. Yeah. So it's like working. And this was so good to be there in person. And of course, with distance and all this, and maybe they can be 200 in it and we were 50 or so and the, the chairs apart and yeah hopefully <laughs> so we'll see Christina to see what what happens yeah so that's that's me it's a lot it's a lot on my plate I have I feel like a juggler <laughs> with 10 balls but it's wonderful. It's it's really wonderful. And today I'm just a little bit exhausted. I went 900 kilometers from Saturday to yesterday night, and so and a whole work day today. So I feel a lot better than I physically feel today. <laughs> I pass on to Lucinda. It's so great to see you again after quite some time. Yeah, it's really lovely to be here. I apologize for being late. I, my uh, 
my computer was upgraded and so where the files are that have my it, it it's a, it's a search so I, i'm so glad to find you um so the question is update on where we are or yeah well it's been a a very full full summer um but i think i'm just going to focus on i mean we we drove um from connecticut to minnesota which is about 1200 miles to deliver the antique cradle to our son and daughter-in-law for their baby and then took a we went relatively fast and then drove back by uh, the michigan upper peninsula uh, which is on lake superior which is this enormous beautiful clean uh, lake with water that looks like the caribbean it's you know green water and uh, amazing paintings on cliffs i mean just natural um so that was lovely two weeks and then we came back to we've been essentially doing things in two and three week uh, chunks we came back to new hampshire and we're working we had that place insulated and now it's going to have heat put in the second floor um, down here we're having our house painted um, so there's a lot of exterior work but the interior work really was my father died in in uh, 2020 in april and we said oh good we can have memorials in august and september and we planned them one for him to be half his ashes put with, with my mother and half in new hampshire and of course then there's been this resurgence of COVID, but we kept going and um, we had relatives come from all over to Connecticut. It was a very sweet, beautiful day. Um, we had a smaller group in New Hampshire on September 5th and it was rainy in contrast, but also um, right afterwards, I, I that night I just was so low and depressed and whatnot. And then finally realized that I had my intention was to be complete. So these are these were ceremonies of completion of his hundred years, but also our journey with him. And the next morning, I woke up and said, "It's done, I'm complete. Now what?" And and it feels like a moving forward. Yesterday there was an, an online uh, baby shower for our son and daughter-in-law, uh, who are doing in like. 17th of November, something like, so it's very exciting. And um, I, I had been telling everybody I didn't know what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. And, that, and I realized that's just, that, that's silly. I know what I'm doing. You know, I'm doing social justice work and I'm writing. And I just, just the fact that I haven't been actually doing those things is a detail. So um, it's time to sort of start, I'm gonna have a, my second cataract removed on next Monday, and uh, that'll be wonderful um, because of the clear clear sight. And I'm really considering taking a dream course because um, just in case there's information about what I need to be doing next that I'm not exactly taking in yet. So um, I'm very excited to. It feels like I didn't I didn't die after all with my father and I hope not with COVID, <laughs> but um, that I'm very excited about, about this feels like a new start. So yeah, thank you. And and I pass, Hanali, have you gone? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Lucinda. I'm here and in South Africa, we are having summer weather. It's very dry. We also really would appreciate because we get summer rain as well. And um, it's very dry and already very hot. Um, and we had some yeah, interesting weather patterns as well. Very cold and then the next day very hot. So this is very interesting. And we, as I mentioned to Heidi and Monja earlier that we have elections coming up, local government elections. So our political Situation is uh, 
politics have been weaponized in so many different ways. Although I'm not involved in it, it you know it's, it's happening around you. And we had some in in your summer we had some serious dilemmas in July with um, things that happened on especially on the coast, um, looting and destruction that made no sense. And for a lot of people, it was very traumatic. And more and more South Africans are leaving the country um, because of the political unrest. And um, so those things are happening. And at the same time, one of my family members are going through a very traumatic separation with her partner, which is also, it's been very interesting to stay present to that and not getting drawn into it, but be compassionate and empathic and not empathic overload. So to really stay present through that and not losing your own, you know, your own journey, your own track. But there are many other good things that's also happening. We are repurposing and reshaping some of our things. And we're also starting with a triple mission that we're really excited about. Um, and about, I think it was two weeks ago on Clubhouse, I attended a session with Jeremy Johnson in the Integral Leadership Group about uh, Gene Webster. Gibson's work, it was just incredible way he shared it with us. It was so inspiring. And um, yeah, it was it, it's still something that's with me, which I really appreciate that I was able to join that session because it was just shared with so much beauty and the wisdom that came out of it. And even other people in the group that were present to that was just mind blowing because nobody went into shadow stuff. It was really the beauty of life that came out of it. So I was really appreciative of being there. And I'm complete and I'll pass to Victoria, Dante. <laughs> Thank you, Hanali. Hello, everybody. It's great to see you all again. Um, I'm still a bit groggy. Uh, I've, I've been sleeping a lot lately, but it seems like the more I sleep, the more, the more tired I am. <laughs> so maybe I have to go the other direction. Um, <clears throat> yes, Dante. So I'm, I hope you all consider yourselves especially beloved by me that I'm here at all. <laughs> I just realized last night as I was about to go to bed that um, I, need to completely rethink my first lecture, which is tomorrow night. And so, um, so I had a very strange night of sleep. Um, and um, so today is going to be very intense um, because I, I realized that if, if, the, um, if the Florentine history of the 13th century is confusing for professional historians, um, it will be all the more so for the general public. <laughs> so last night before I went to bed, I steeped myself in an Italian um, documentary about 13th century Florence and all the battles and the different factions and the Pope versus the Holy Roman Empire, et cetera. And um, I think that's why I'm still groggy. It was, it was, <laughs> I understood the Italian, but I did not follow the politics. Um, everyone was changing sides continuously. And, and um, anyway, it was a very dramatic time. So um, apropos of, of what you were saying, um, Hanali, it's actually really interesting every now and then to dip into history and find out that human nature is the same century after century after century. And the violence in Italy, um, I mean, no wonder, no wonder uh, Garibaldi fought so hard to unify the country because people, every city state was slaughtering people. And even within the cities, I mean, there were wars continuously, it seems for centuries and centuries. Anyway, that's a strange, um, a strange uh, prelude to my <laughs> catching up. Um, well, Beatrice can fill in, um, she, she came home for, uh, a month, which turned out to be about five days. Um, she can tell you, <laughs> she came home to do the laundry about five times. And, um, but that was nice. It was nice to see her and, and uh, hang clothes, hang her little clothes on the line. <laughs> so we had some um, intimate contact. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, the rest of the summer is has been filled with deaths of um, my two best friends and um, two cousins and my sister-in-law. And um, I will, with that, I will pass to Beatrice because she will fill in um, that portion of the news. So it's been, anyway, so it's been a kind of a, a, a dark, summer in terms of, um, and none of the deaths were from COVID. So it just it just seems to be the way the world is right now. So um, on that bleak note, I'll pass it to Beatrice who is going to temper it with moments of joy and also Schlaraffenland, uh, Monia. <laughs> okay, Beatrice, you're on. <laughs> Boy, got a real uh, introduction there. Oh, look, Martini's here. Oh, yay. <laughs> Hello, Martini and Ernst. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Um, well, I, I'm the last to check in and then I'm going to pass to you, Martini, but I haven't I haven't done my check in yet. Um, so since we last met, I had a birthday. Um, I had a wonderful celebration here in New York with with uh, a group of friends. We had a we played board games together. I, I saw live music um, outdoors, um, did some dancing. It was really lovely. Um, and uh, and then right after that, I traveled to California and I was in California for a month, as my mother said. Um, but yes, I, <laughs> in that month, I took uh, three little trips. I took a trip up to Santa Barbara where I used to live. It was my first time back since I moved to New York. So that was, uh, beautiful and interesting to in some ways see see a, a alternate timeline what would it have been like if I hadn't moved away because many of my friends and lots of things that were there when I lived there had stayed the same everybody was doing the same thing and I had gone to New York and had a whole other life and then came back and saw how things were in Santa Barbara but it was wonderful to reconnect with old friends and then I took another little trip to LA to see um, my friends there. And a friend of mine hosted a, a private uh, dance party, house party. Um, and that was the first time dancing for in a long time. I may mean, have danced a little bit with um, close friends, but um, as you know, co with COVID dancing has not been, social dancing has not been possible. Um, and, uh, and then the third weekend, <laughs> I went up to the mountains. Uh, my friend has a family cabin in the mountains. It was gorgeous. Um, and we had a little dance weekend, uh, vaccinated, invite only, a small number of people. But we, uh, some of them uh, taught little workshops and we all ate together communally. It was very wonderful. It was, it was kind of communal living for a weekend um, with wonderful people that all knew each other or if you didn't know someone directly, they were a friend of a friend. So you were never more than one step removed from someone else in the space. Um, gorgeous views, there's a lake, there were trees. And as, as I was up there, I was thinking a lot about Austria, my homeland and missing it and thinking about how, how happy I am when there's a lake and trees and mountains. And, and I was telling, um, my friend's brother and I stayed a couple of days after the weekend to help clean up the cabin before coming back down to San Diego. And um, I was telling him about my time in Austria and my favorite aunt and my memories of her. And about five minutes or one, two minutes, very shortly after I was sharing that story, I looked down at my phone and my half brother was calling me and he never calls me, but I had just missed the call. And I thought that's strange what's going on. And then he called me again and I answered and I got the news that um, this favorite aunt that I was telling my friend about had died, um, which was a very <laughs> big wave of news. Um, but also I feel like I was meant to be in the mountains when I heard that. I don't know, it was strange that I was thinking of her and thinking of Austria right when I got that news. And my first thought, my it was determined that I'm gonna to go to the funeral. And I, I didn't think about the logistics. I didn't think about how complicated that would be or anything, but I was determined that this was someone who was so special to me. I had to be there and I wanted to dance for the funeral. And that was my immediate um, 
desire when I got the news. Um, anyway, so fast forward, I'm, <laughs> I know we're already been using a lot of time with check-ins, but um, so I, I came back to New York for about four days and then I went to Austria for two weeks. Um, and uh, I was there for the funeral. It was my first time back in 16 years. First time as an adult. Um, last time I was a teenager and I, um, it was a big trip. I could talk for hours about it. I got to see Monia and Martini, which was lovely. <laughs> and uh, in person uh, and it's it's so wonderful when you when you've met someone online and you don't you feel like you really know them and it was so interesting to see them in person and feel it didn't feel like meeting a stranger it was meeting a, a family member a friend you know that even though we've never actually seen each other in person before um but yeah so i was in austria for two weeks i spoke german the whole time it all came back to me so that was amazing um and uh, and the funeral was very beautiful. I danced. Um, I shared the video with Martini Monia, and I'm going to send it to you as well. I have a promise to send the video to people. <laughs> um, and uh, I met my half siblings for the first time in 16 years, and family members and cousins and aunts and uncles. I stayed overnight um, a few nights in the house where my grandmother grew up. Um, I found my childhood home in Vienna. It was <laughs> a very nostalgic and, and um, heartwarming and big trip for me. The most important trip, I think, of my adult life, maybe my whole life. Um, anyway, so that's, <laughs> I'll stop talking about, there's much more I can say about it, but it was beautiful to reconnect with my roots and to reconnect with my family and to meet in person my chosen family. Um, so um, with that, um, I will pass to Martini. <laughs> Everyone else has checked in, so it's, just, it's just now your turn. Don't forget to unmute. Hello, excuse me that I'm too late. Um, thank you very much, Beatrice, for your intro introduction. And we had a very uh, interesting time together. And um, um, it is very nice that Beatrice stayed at our place and that we met Monia. Um, I was very inspired by um, uh, what the what we did this summer, we did not contact each other too much, but I read uh, quite a bit of the uh, uh, feminine face of God. And then I, uh, they mentioned in this book as well, um, Anna Karenin, and I read that book, and I'm reading what Victoria was uh, has sent us about uh, Dante. I am so impressed by all the literature I go through, and I combine this with Beatrice, with Moria, with uh, everything, and I'm painting. Not yet, but I, in my, uh, uh, so I'm very inspired, and I don't want to talk too much now because I don't know if all of you already have done this. Okay, but then um, I give to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. So in our German speaking group, I often try to find out a, a topic for the day as today we didn't give ourselves the topic. So I'm wondering what I was impressed, uh, what you said, uh, Beatrice, something with coming back to the roots. That could be a nice topic. Who, who has some other suggestion? Or coming, finding the roots, maybe not even coming back, but finding the roots of our life. So. Waiting for some other suggestions. Well, we can start with that one. I also, oh, it, and it, and it, maybe, maybe. 
related um, what Lucinda said about uh, things coming to completion and then mm -hmm. what are you doing with the rest of your life? <laughs> I don't know, I did, but I, but I, that struck me when you were talking about that of, of the things that sometimes we, the things that come to an end, or I was thinking about the funerals and how important it was. Um, because my mother also mentioned we had other, other, several other people in our close circle that, uh, that died this summer. And so this, the funeral in Austria was one of three funerals that I attended this summer, but, but at each one, it felt like such a good, a, a, Close, some some form of closure and and kind of I don't know closing of chapters and opening of new chapters I like the roots topic though too I actually I really think they're they're very related because when we come to completion we're forced inward so to look at that so I'd say it's I say it's one one juicy topic And what to do with the rest of, of our lives. When you say it, Beatrice, it sounds a little bit, you know, it's more up to us. <laughs> but it's an important topic because, I mean, in whatever age we are, uh, we need to know what is worthwhile living for. No? But I think they are all together. They're all connected, these, um, these topics. So whoever wants to start, Oh, let's let's start with Beatrice. Uh, what what is coming back to the roots? What did that do with you? What 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 was the inner process? What what a benefit or what, how you call it? What what did you learn about it? Um, boy, big questions. <laughs> I I described the experience to someone recently that it was like putting on a glove that I hadn't worn for 16 years, but it still fit perfectly. That's what it felt like to be back. Um, everything was familiar and known and it felt like home. It felt, it absolutely felt like home. And I didn't know, I didn't know what it would feel like. I was very nervous about the trip, but even with the language coming back, everything just, and I guess what I realized is, is even though for essentially for 16 years, I, occasionally thought about Austria, but I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about my, that, those roots, and I didn't feel necessarily very connected. And yet it was somewhere in me, and it never went away, and I just had to go back to the physical space for it to all come back. Um, so the embodied memory, or in, I don't know, that it's, that's fascinating to me how much is stays within us even if we're not paying attention or conscious of it even after years and years and years um and then the other thing is i think i mean i've only been back a few days i got back on wednesday <laughs> still very jet lag still still have a lot to process and i've had to jump into work and jump into life very quickly so i haven't had a time to really sit and think about everything but i do feel more grounded um, in general. I feel more solid in my identity. I don't have words for it, but I just feel more like rooted. <laughs> um, and it actually makes me think, I've, I've maybe mentioned this before, I've been going to see a um, Reiki uh, intuitive body healing uh, massage uh, person. Um, and he sometimes uh, has told me that sometimes in a session, he feels like he notices that maybe my, 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 my legs and my torso have, were not connected or something and that he kind of helped getting that energy going again. I'm bringing this up because I think that the roots, I feel like my roots were always there, but I was, I was up in the tree branches somewhere this whole time. I was up in the top leaves and the leaves were falling off or I wasn't really sure what was going on and I couldn't see the earth. And now, but the roots were always there. They never went anywhere. And then by going back, I 
really like got that connection going, got the energy flow going again from the roots to the branches. And now I feel, I can actually feel those roots again, but they, they never were, they never were gone. It was just a matter of reconnecting. So I don't know, this, <laughs> that's my answer for the moment. Beatrice, I visualized it by making a photo when you were standing in the big tree. Can you remember? Maybe you show this, uh, that, that is very interesting. I'll, I'll search for the photo. <laughs> But please, someone else <laughs> speak in the meantime. I'll speak up. Uh, I mentioned the vacation we went on um, to Cape Cod. And uh, even though my husband grew up in Massachusetts, he doesn't have a connection with Cape Cod. But that's where my family went every summer uh, during my childhood. Um, and we went back to the same place. We had a house that friends owned and we went back there all the time. Um, so I, I feel very connected, um, especially because it was childhood and, and obviously, you know, uh, that embeds itself differently than I think adult experiences. But when I went back this summer, we were with two other couples and, and of course my husband, and it was hard to reconnect because everybody else has an agenda and kind of my agenda of being there is to kind of feel some of the magic uh, again. And the only way I could really do that was to go off by myself for walks um, and primarily in the woods because that's where the aromas come up. Um, uh, uh, the bay leaves and, and the salt air and the sand and I don't know what other, what other things I'm smelling. Um, but it's interesting. You, it's hard to recreate things when you're with different people in a totally different context. Um, so it was kind of disappointing for me because it wasn't easy to reestablish the, the magic that I wanted to feel. I, I could do it a little bit, but um, not very much. And, you know, even we went, I uh, suggested we go back to the town where we had stayed um, during my childhood. And that was fun. Uh, some of it was very much the same and hadn't changed. Some of it was very different. Um, but didn't, again, I didn't feel like it was up to me to kind of wander off where I may have wanted to go because I wanted to go to the beach where we stayed and, and uh, did all that kind of stuff. So it, it was mixed. It was a mixed experience of trying to reestablish my roots. I was glad I did the trip, but also recognizing that a lot of those roots are really just my own personal experience and, and memories um, and thoughts about my parents. Um, and I can't really establish that or, or share that in a, in a very meaningful way when I'm with uh, totally different people. So that was, that was kind of my experience of trying to get back to roots. Um, and it was lovely to be with family and friends. So that was another way of reestablishing roots. Um, Tom and I are on the West Coast and all of our family, not all of our friends, but all of our family is, remains on the East Coast. So uh, we go back often to, uh, to reconnect, which is lovely. Just like Beatrice said, you know, going back and making those uh, reconnections again. I found the photo. I don't know if you can see. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then there's a second one I'm looking a different direction. Well, it's, yeah, it's washed out here, but anyway, that's in the tree. <laughs> your roots and your Martini, I don't, I, uh, you were muted, so I saw you saying something. Excuse me. You also can see the Danube. It was uh, on the Danube. It's in the background, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this was the tree by the Danube. This was, uh, Martini and I went for a bike ride together um, in, in Kritzendorf, where, where Martini lives, by the Danube. This was so beautiful when she was sitting on the bike. Uh, she is not a biker. 
and um, she said, oh yeah, we can do it. And then the, the saddle was too high and my husband made it smaller and it was fine. But suddenly she was, and she was sitting like a professor on the bike, you know? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I can understand why you said my head and my legs were uh, are not together. You know, that um, through the massage, they come again together. And this was so beautiful. And she she turned her um, the the how do you call this uh, where you give the direction? And she just wanted to drive in the river. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that was the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, but it it was nice. <laughs> Beatrice, how old were you when you left Austria? Uh, originally seven. Um, and then we went back uh, twice uh, between age, ages seven and 13. I went back two more times. Um, and then 13 was the last time I was there. Yeah. Well, I, I'm connecting. All right, Beatrice, you complete. Um, I'm, uh, and also Christine. Yeah. Uh, I'm connecting to this in many ways. and. Very briefly, um, I've been spending quite a bit of time in this family house in New Hampshire that's been in the family since 1819. And it's built in 1894. And um, quite a lot of things of my family history, my father's family history have happened there. So I've been actually taking on as my writing project, um, I'm going, there's a newspaper from 1890 to 1950 and I've been reading, it's a Wednesday weekly paper and I read for my ancestors, but it's, it's more also for many people in the family because my great grandmother's husband fell off a cart, was killed, but there was a little girl who stayed with him. It was, there's a, there was many, many stories. So I'm, perhaps I'm trying to repeople my life a little, but an interesting th thing happened right before I came home where um, there was, I had a garden and I noticed there were wild grapes growing um, and full of these purple jewels. So I said, all right, with my mother who didn't like this place very much, I made grape jelly um, when I was maybe 12, you know, and we just picked the grapes and stumped on them with our feet. And it was, I don't have many happy memories with my mother connecting with her, but that was one. I realized later. So I picked them, I got poison ivy from it, but, um, and then, then I made jelly, but I don't know if you make jam or jelly, but there is this process of boiling it where the, the you're supposed to let the drip off the spoon and it, it's supposed to be two drops that come into one and go down as a sheet and 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 20, nothing, nothing. It was getting kind of thick on the thing, but finally, at 22 minutes, I recognized it wasn't what they thought, but there was this bead, a long stringy bead that came down and I remembered it from with my mother. And the jelly was done, it was very good. It was, you know, it, um, but there was this sense of, of being given the gift of reconnection, of being given the gift of those doors opening to our, our roots. So I think we can, look for them, claw at that door, but the door needs to open and it can be little something as, as Christine said, it could be a scent, but it was that bead of jelly that, that opened this door to a uh, happy time with my mother, which was a gift. Uh, there weren't many, but it was a gift. So um, spending time in this place seems to be opening a place where those doors can open. And I'm very curious as to what will be given. I had that experience almost hourly in Austria. <laughs> every every piece of food I ate, every you know corner I turned and smell or sight, it was it was just a constant <laughs> return of memories. But it's it always it, these kinds of things always make me think about um, how 
sad it is that most of the world wants to buy into the duality of mind versus body and that they're separate and we're not connected human beings and and really it's all it's all together you know <laughs> the senses and the phys physically being in a certain location and interacting with things and and smelling and seeing and tasting and how it's all interconnected yeah Yeah, I just finished a, <clears throat> my second course um, with a, a, a woman who teaches somatic experiencing and um, she's from India. So she, uh, she studied somatic experiencing in the Bay Area. She lives in San Francisco and there's an institute there. So she's actually, I mean, it's a professional certification or something, but because she's Indian and um, and I don't think she's been here, well, she's, she hasn't been here long enough to like wipe out her Indianness. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so she brings to the somatic experiencing teaching um, this wealth of, of wisdom from her culture and from her traditions um, and a lot of you know, spiritual wisdom. And she, she's been teaching us to approach everything that we do she says from the bottom up so it's exactly what um what beatrice was talking about and um this idea of the and <laughs> martini saying that beatrice was sitting on the bicycle like a professor i love it um <laughs> that um that we so she was teaching us that even if we want to um come to terms, we wanna process really powerful emotions, or even if we want to deal with intellectual ideas, like she was, um, I was really shocked because it, in the class, cause I had sent her the information about my Dante lectures, but I sent it to her just because, you know, I've gotten to know her through these classes I've taken with her. Um, but she um, announced to the class yesterday that, um, that she would like to save time at the end of class for me to share this, project and I was kind of shocked I thought well it's so irrelevant like it has nothing to do with our coursework um you know I was flattered that she would want me to do that but I I, I, I was kind of shocked and anyway um I realized then when I started to you know at the end of class when she prompted me to share about it I realized that that's in fact um, the reason I do what I do. And I hadn't, it hadn't occurred to me before because by combining the music from a, a particular time with the art from a particular time. So it's not just history, like dry history in a book. It's, um, it's my goal has always been to make it a visceral experience so that you actually feel as much as possible, as much, you know, as much as I can sort of try to you know, channel it. <laughs> um, you feel like you're in a particular time and place, which technically is history and not something that we can access unless, um, you know, we, we have some kind of mystical experience of a previous life in that place and time or something. Um, and so it was kind of a, it, it really struck me because I, it, it occurred to me that, um, and, and actually, so in this conversation, you know, what Martini said about the professor on the bicycle, I thought, I thought that's exactly it, that um, for those of us who live very much in the head, um, because of our culture, we can feel completely separated from the body. But as Proust, you know, so famously brought out, you know, in his um, recherche, uh, the taste of a madeleine that he that he ate at his grandmother's house as a child could prompt this, you know, these memories of thousands of pages. Um, and it, that's you know, or or Christine smelling the um, the bay leaf and the um, the you know these other the smell of this of the the salt smell of the sea and everything. So I think. It, it to me now it feels like a sacred, um, a sacred responsibility, because I think our culture has really lost that to 
to to advocate. I mean, up until yesterday, <laughs> I didn't realize that I was part of that that movement. Um, it was somehow intuitive. I was just doing it through music and art because I have such a visceral relationship with with music and art. But it didn't occur to me that 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 was a way to somehow try to get people to get into their own their own bodies. And um, so anyway, I'm really exciting, exciting. I'm excited because um, I, I'm realizing that all of us with our various gifts, whether um, whether it's writing or teaching or facilitating workshops or um, everything that we do, we can bring a more this holistic um, experiential approach into our work. And um, so anyway, I just I'm really excited about that. And I, I'm grateful to my teacher that she brought that together because I, I wouldn't have thought of it in a million years. So um, I think it's very exciting. I love what you said, Victoria, about the immersiveness of the, those type of experiences. Today's my mom's birthday, and um, so it's the second birthday since she passed last year. And we had a, a family lunch yesterday, which was beautiful with my siblings. And it was very interesting that um, they, it was supposed to be like a memorial lunch, but it was actually a celebration. And I was the only one bringing her even up through the whole process because I created a video of her from her 80th birthday. Uh, we had lots of pictures, so I created a video. To show and my brother lives in another city and he, um, he uh, I got them via Zoom on that they could also share some time with us because he couldn't travel. But it was very interesting about the food part. And that's why I love what you just said, Victoria, about that, that memories that comes back from food that you ate when you were younger and in your mom's house. But the synchronicity was astounding for me because my niece asked me if I wanted some tea at, at, before we left, we had some tea. Um, and my mom used to drink, it's a herbal tea that's growing in South Africa, rooibos tea. It's very, very healthy. It's got lots of um, natural antibiotics in it. And I couldn't, I could never bear it. I could never drink it because my mom, it was the only thing my mom ever drank. She never drank coffee or anything. So that memory of the smell is it's just something that when you walk into the house, you, you'd smell the rebels. And I couldn't, it's just something I never resonated with. My niece forgot about this. So she offered me tea and she said, would you like some rebels? And she looked at my face and she said, oh, I see, I see. No, 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 no. But it was classic because she was in such shock to remember that I can, I can still not stomach it after all these years. But while I want to share that in terms of our roots is, my daughter's dog has a big skin irritation on his one paw. And intuitively today, I was with her and intuitively, I told her that our dog, when we were little, my mom used to give the dog every night his bowl of rebels tea. Together with her, she would have her tea at eight o'clock and the dog would have his tea with her in his bowl. And intuitively, I was like guided, Google it, maybe, a rebel stick could be helpful for this dog with the skin irritation. Because nothing works for it. Um, and I Googled it, and it was one of the one, one of the things that's very healthy to give to your dogs. You pour a little bit of this tea over the dog food, and then the dog eats it and it helps with this thing. But the synchronicity was just like incredible. And then so it was like, like even on my mom's birthday now, she shared some wisdom with us, taking us back into the past. With because of our family dog at the time, having this, and then now giving it to my daughter's dog to see if it doesn't help for his allergy, whatever this is causing. But it was just classic how it was just all aligned since yesterday already, when my niece asked me whether I would like some, <laughs> and I'm just like, no way. <laughs> but also, again, take me back into my, you know, as a child, into our house of that smell, because I'm very so sensory, and that type of immersive experience of of um, just being transported back into history. And, and it was just beautiful that it now happened all within my mom's birthday today. And now I feel her suddenly. I couldn't feel her yesterday. And that's why I wanted to connect with what you said, Christine, 
because the others didn't speak about her. It was difficult for me to connect with her at that, at, during the lunch. It was only when my daughter and I drove home where I could feel her again. And now suddenly where I'm telling it to you. So because they were speaking about COVID and all sorts of other things, uh, there was no connection point. I couldn't reconnect with her like I would have wanted to. And suddenly when we left, I could do it. So I completely resonate with what you said, Christine. And that, that how other people's agendas and what they speak about can influence that, especially if you're in a small space together after such a long time being in lockdowns and the like. So I'm complete. Thank you for the topic. It's actually very special on my mom's birthday. Thank you. Martini, can I show a picture of the painting you have in your sunroom? Do I have your permit? Yes, okay. Um, I don't know how well you'd be able to see, but this is a painting in Martini's sunroom of a woman hugging a tree and the tree is hugging her back. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> you could probably send a better picture via email, but I just, I, as we were sitting here, I was, and I, that image came back to mind. And I think it's also, um, we were talking a lot about our own roots, but also I love the idea of, of, of the roots and, and maybe the ancestors or, or the other people with their roots hugging us back. So I wanted to share that image. So this is going from the sacred to the profane, but um, <laughs> I suddenly had a flashback to the Disney film Pocahontas, um, where <laughs> where she goes, her, her grandmother lives in the tree, her grandmother is a tree spirit, and um, or uh, something like that, and um, every time Pocahontas needs advice, she goes to the tree and asks, and then the, the tree sings a whole song to her about what she should do or whatever anyway Beatrice watched that film like 3,000 times when she was a child so <laughs> it popped right into my head so um Walt Disney's Pocahontas okay <laughs> okay I wanted to come in because we have forgotten a little bit that when somebody is unmuting themselves that means that they want to speak next and so maybe you know, because Gertrude is for a while that she was unmuted and other people came in. So maybe you pay attention on that. No, that's fine. It's fine. Like, um, actually, I was just connecting my work with what you have been saying. This, this uh, company I was talking about, they are now for, I don't know, I think he's in uh, for 40 years or so, or no, not for 35, 30 something. And um, it's, it's like, so he is about to, to hand over. So he's turning 60 this year and, and, and what will come out of this? So, so, and so we call it future and the name of the company. And I just realized that with the interviews, we look at the stories, we look at what, so if we have a topic, then we say, okay, maybe at the moment you are challenged or so, but uh, go back in time and see where you already uh, were successful with that or where you already did it in a way that, that was inspiring or whatever. And, and so I thought, this is connecting to to the roots to the to the to history um and not like okay we have to change this and how do we want to change but look at what's already there and what's already in the in the dna of the company so uh, so let's see and go from there and then dream from there so if all those qualities are unimpeded what could be possible and coming from there to to come from that <laughs> mystery to the profane and what do we do in the in the in daily life or how do we manifest that dream and and i i just thought this is yeah this is like connecting to the roots and to the qualities and all that's already there 
all the the presence that that history and that that are maybe uncovered yet. So so I was like, yeah, that's what I'm doing <laughs> with companies. So it, it was nice to 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 do that. And I was thinking of my, it being complete. I was the last days with my parents. And when um, the, my siblings and I, we, we carried the, the, what do you call the coffin? And when we let him down, so I was looking there and said, this is complete. There's nothing more to say. So I had the last days to talk to him. He couldn't talk anymore, but he was listening and, and I had to complete several things with him, a specific one. <laughs> and, and I could see his tears coming out. And so it was like, after a while, we just looked at each other and, and so it felt so peaceful. And I know my, my sister didn't have the same feeling. It was, yeah. And similar to my mom, there was, so I don't think much of them or I, but it's, it's like, because it's complete, it's just, yeah. So at this, these two memorials, we, we did two things. Uh, we played, there's a, a hymn uh, called, it's the Navy hymn, that eternal father strong to save. And, and uh, we sang that together. We had reminiscences. And then um, my father loved Dvorak and actually took us to Prague and, um, we went to the Dvorak festival there where they played the New, New World Symphony in the Rudolfinum, this gorgeous, gorgeous concert hall. And it was kind of like a high point. He was, was his first of many trips we took around when he was 90s, 94, 95. Um, so we played a, a very simple version of that with Yo-Yo Ma and Kathleen Stott, but the, the theme of going home because my father had asked um, to go home. Toward the end, he was asking to go home and finally he couldn't talk anymore. And especially to women, he, he wasn't a women's man. But my husband came in and he said, hey, Bill. I mean, he hadn't talked for a week. Hey, Bill, I want my cap. And his cap, he had a European cap. He never went out ever without his cap. So we put his cap on him and he, he passed the next day. Um, so we placed his cap in there with his ashes. And, and I'm so moved that you don't think anymore because that's my experience. My father preoccupied my entire life and it is done. So I thank you for saying that. Some things do get complete in this lifetime and uh, allow us to move on. Well, I put the title of a book in the chat before some of you came, so I'll put it again. And it sort of sums up what we talk today. And I... You're muted, you're muted, you're muted. Uh, I mentioned the book right at the beginning of today's chat and it's uh, by Andrew Holacek, Dreams of Light. And it's sort of uh, the common roots we have, uh, all of us. And it's, it really fascinates me because it's about a daytime practice of uh, lucid waking in daytime. 
uh, in your daytime consciousness. Uh, so I really recommend that book to you. And it's also about how we cover up our ourselves with a kind of narrative, which actually uh, is irrelevant. Um, yeah, I'm going to put the name again in and so everybody can see it now. Andrew Holacek, Dreams of Light. He is from the Buddhist uh, Buddhist background that helps, but it's not necessary. And it's not easy to read. So re you really have to meditate chapter by chapter by chapter. But it's, for me, it's just amazing how everything all of a sudden fits together and yeah but maybe it's i had to become that old so that i fin can finally understand that book it, it was published last year so um just in time for me i thank you all for your sharing some of it moved me very deeply and I wish you all a very relaxed and beautiful evening tonight. And maybe some rain for Heidi. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I, that was I my must, check out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I haven't said anything about this roots and I was thinking the whole time, what could I say about this? But now in the very last moment, it came to me because Monia said that the things come together in some way. Um, that's what I'm experiencing for a while now, that things come together and they appear. And if you remember the first lesson, the first meeting we had, we, we talked backward uh, of the year, no? We, we, we looked back on the year 2021. And it seems that it is developing, like I have said, because I have said I will have found a, a, um, a solution for my house and I will have uh, people around and things like that. And actually tomorrow, a family will come with five children to stay here for the time and we want to create a school. They are teachers and they want to, to do, uh, first of all, homeschooling, which is not possible in, in Germany. That's why also they like Italy, but they come here. And then the idea is to, to do a school, not only for, for children. We have already created an association for holistic um, building, education uh, and culture. And I have the plan to put my, my house into a foundation, which is already existing with uh, more generations, more generation uh, living and, and holistic culture. So it's exactly what we want to do. And at the moment, I always told you, I have a young man here. He has found a, a girl and now, young people in the house and she is beautiful. I like her and things are coming together. And in the sense of root, I think I have created the roots all the time. In 30 years, I thought, why am I doing this with this house? Why it is so big, you know? And for me alone, it doesn't make sense. And now I have the feeling it's coming to, to how do you say, to the, uh, goal of of its itself you know and i was only the the um, midwife for for doing these things so i'm very curious how that will go probably another family will come to with only one child and we will see how it's it's going on so that's my check out for today i'm very happy about what we brought together and the, the stories we we shared really inspiring and I thank you and if you want to do a checkout all together I give over to to Hanali which is here near me uh, with a heart on the left side <laughs> thank you ladies uh, 
It was wonderful to be here with you after all this time. And I had to also just experience what you were sharing in my body as well. Thank you for that. It's always wonderful to have that when I'm with you. And I'm passing to Gertrud. I know it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I really, I mean, it was a very busy, um, big summer. We also celebrated the 30th anniversary of my, of my sister's wedding and birth of my, so we, we had some celebrations as well. And, um, but it's so nice, not but, and it's so nice <laughs> to see you all again and, and uh, yeah, all <laughs> who were maybe busy before um, for other things. So, so it's great to have full house here. And um, I wish you rain, Heidi, um, Christine to be, like immune to anything that comes your way again. Um, Victoria for Dante, the best. Yeah. And uh, Hanneli, a wonderful birthday for your mom. And Beatrice, the best for you now with your roots connected. Yeah. And Monia, thank you for the for the dreams. And I'm always amazed by your pictures. This is like amazing what you what you do as pictures. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm really, really happy to see you all. Lucinda. I'm very, very grateful to be here with everybody. And uh, I, I do, Monia, I'm getting that book seems seems just right. But I, uh, um, the interconnectedness, uh, all of us with these projects popping and the completions and the losses and the, the swirling of life and Heidi particularly, the, that uh, the Paradiso Integrale is, flourishing like the daisies behind you. Um, just very, very, very excited um, to be with all of you. So I pass to uh, Christine. Um, I have a very long day ahead of me, probably like Victoria does. <laughs> Um, I've got, within the next 10 hours, I think I've got nine hours of Zoom going on. So one after the next, I almost wasn't going to check in this morning because of being uh, too many hours on the computer, but uh, this was a, very much a priority for me. And I'm so glad that I decided to come and meet with you all. It was delightful. Enjoyed it very much. And Heidi, I hope you will share more about that experience with the family and what's going on. I'm, I'm very intrigued by what you've got going on there. And uh, having visited uh, your place, I, I have a visual image. Um, so uh, I'd like to hear more. Hope to do that next time. And uh, love to you all. And I will pass to uh, Victoria. That's solidarity in our work days. <laughs> so let's do it. Um, well, I, I won't be spending the next 10 hours on Zoom. I'll be spending the next, but I will be spending the next 10 hours on, on the computer. Um, yeah, I, I, I had 200 images for tomorrow night's lecture before I had my new idea. Um, so <laughs> now it's going to be like a, a thousand images and I'll have to start culling them. Um, 
but I am so glad to be here today. I also was hesitant because I, I thought um, that I couldn't spare the time, which is probably true, but, um, but my, um, my father-in-law, my husband's father, whom I never knew, but I wish I had, he sounds fabulous, Oberhuber, Agon Oberhuber. Apparently his um, motto was, he was the city manager of the city of Linz in Austria. And according to my husband, he, his motto was, there's nothing so urgent that it won't become just a little more urgent if I wait until tomorrow. <laughs> so, so I guess uh, poor Beatrice inherited a kind of procrastination from both sides of the family. Um, anyway, I, um, I loved your, your uh, checkout, Gertraut, because it was so thoughtful. Um, you remembered every single person, all the details. So um, I won't endeavor to repeat that, but I think it's beautiful. Um, and it shows that we're family and that we're all bound together. And I'm just so grateful to be part of it. And again, I wanna pay tribute to you, Heidi, um, because you know, without you, we wouldn't have our little family here. So, um, and maybe we can all retire to the Paradiso Integrale. Uh, we, we can all live with you in the fullness of time. So um, I will pass to Martini. Thank you, all of you. I am very pleased about the dreams of light, Monia. And I have to tell that Beatrice also went to Reykjavik and she has saw the Norse lights. And then I read from Dante, from Beatrice. I didn't know this. And I was so pleased. I, I sent her some sentences about uh, what I read about the guidance of uh, 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 Beatrice was the guidance of Dante. And um, she had to see in this night the the, um, the northern lights. Oh, I was I have not. Uh, Moria said that I can see this as well on the YouTube. I will try and uh, let myself in, inspire by the lights and the Dante. And what I can combine with each other, I don't know. But I thank you very much for all your um, attribution. <laughs> um, I will let it work in me. Thank you very much. You are very inspiring, all of you. And I can say that I experienced this as well as um, just like a an, uh, teppich and, and um, um, uh, that is all coming together in weaving, like weaving. Yeah, everything is so beautiful. Thank you very much. Be Beatrice, you are missing, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll round it out. Um, I think it's so beautiful. What I was going to say was, was I love all of the nature metaphors that have been brought up today. And then Martini reminded <laughs> also, of, I, I was very fortunate to see the Northern Lights and my stopover. It was just, I had an Iceland stopover in both directions to Austria because honestly, because it was the cheapest ticket, but I had two magical experiences on either end of my trip, um, visiting Iceland for a few hours on each end. Um, and also in every, in every place that I was on my trip, except for Vienna, um, I saw a rainbow. So that was, it was beautiful. And, and, and also on my flight to Austria originally, or to Iceland, to Austria, um, my very first flight, um, it was, I think, full moon and I had a window seat and I saw the moon reflecting on the water over the city of New York when I was flying away. <laughs> so anyway, it was, it was, it's beautiful. These, this nature, nature is so beautiful. And um, I'm gonna be thinking about roots and trees and um, Martini's tree hugging me. And, um, and yes, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful session. I, I never want to miss <laughs> Women Matters meeting. <laughs>
it's always so beautiful and we always co-create something wonderful and I'm so happy to have this family of chosen family of, of women in my life so thank you thank you Heidi and Heidi I'd love to um, join the German groups now that my German is um, functional um, so if you could yes. send me that information or add me to your list um i would yes, wonderful that. i yeah. was so surprised how well you speak in german so that's really great and i will welcome you tomorrow tomorrow night our night your morning okay it's at seven o'clock our time okay if you yeah send send me the information and tuesdays I will. it's the same link tuesdays at seven p.m. European time. Okay. The German group. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you very, very, very much. And the nice, we are full house, nine little pictures. And some of us, we know each other in person, some we don't, but it doesn't really matter. We have seen, no? when we meet, that's like, as we have known for forever. So have a nice week and we meet in two weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>